Hi, this is Dr. Crane. I'm going to help you guys learn to do some field sketching. I know I have another field sketching video, but this one specifically goes with the virtual field camp that we're doing here at Mississippi State University. Um, and for this particular assignment where you all are in Moab. So uh, what I want you to look at on the computer over here is that we're down in this valley area. So all of these white dots, again, those are your um, rock units where you can go to do your rock descriptions, and we'll go over in a minute uh, how you're supposed to do that also. But um, this is the, these are the cross-section lines where you all will be working. This is that geologic map that's draped over the terrain. Um, and I just want to, I want to go over a sketching location with you that's right by the location that you're going to do your description for the Wingate Sandstone. This isn't one of the field trip stops, uh, but I just want to go over how to do a field sketch one more time so that you guys are really comfortable with it before you do it at your outcrops and so that you know what I'm looking for. So this is a, a valley area right here. When you're in the field in the future and you're doing your field work, you want to look for these nice valleys where you've got like a river cutting through or sometimes um, there will be like an interstate going through something like that where they've built the road through the low point um, in the mountain range or the hillside. Those are really great places to get good exposure of the rocks that you're going to be looking at while you're in the field. So um, it's not taking the easy way out, it's, it's playing it smart. So finding those places where either a river has uh, cut down in here and done the work of a rock hammer for you or where the Department of Transportation has done the same thing. Those are, those are really good choices, good places to go first. So um, here we're going to go to this place where this river has done the cutting for us. We're going to go down this way. And I want to do a sketch looking at this side of this rock formation because we're going we're gonna to get in here a good sketch of the JK unit, of uh, the next unit down from JK, which looks like it's another J unit, and then the TRC unit, which is right here. So we're going to get those three in sequence, so we can, we can label them later. Or JW. This one's JW, Wingate. Okay, so in our sketch, we know that we're going to need directions, and it looks like north is over to our left. So looking at this valley, the left side of our sketch is going to be north-northeast, and the right side of our sketch is going to be to the south-southwest. All of the sketches you make for virtual fields camp are going to need directions and sometimes it's going to be hard to remember what weighs what when you're down um, in Google Earth Street View so you just want to make sure that you note it kind of before you do the zooming in. All right let's come in here. So again looking at that geologic map draped over we can expect to see some unit down here. I think it's the TRC a unit in the middle that's Wingate, and then a top unit that's going to be JK. Come down right here. Ah. If that happens to you where you come down and you're, you're not in street, you just come back up. And try again. And maybe a third time will be a charm. There we go. Okay. So looking up at this outcrop, um, if you can take your hand and try to mimic dip. So it's kind of coming like this. Looks like it might actually be coming a little bit toward us. So I'm going to move just some a little bit more um, perpendicular to section or I'm, I'm sketching a long strike. Come down just a little bit. That's a little bit better. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Nice. All right. 
so now that I'm I'm over here, let's go ahead and, and try to do this sketch. Okay, so when you're in the field and you're doing this sketch, you gotta fight, or for me, okay, I have to fight the instinct to go to the detail first. So I'm a structure person, I wanna think about the fractures, but what you need to do is capture the larger shape of the outcrop first, okay? So for me, this is the area we're focusing on, okay? We've got Wingate, we've got some JK on top, and then we've got that TRC unit down here. I need to capture the shape of this outcrop because that shape is actually important to talking about how each of those units is weathering. Like that TRC unit down here, that is, is starting where this break in the slope is. Okay, so our TRC unit is a slope former. And where it transitions and comes up, we've got this nice blocky unit right here. That's going to be our, our Wingate sandstone. So that's that unit. And then above that, we've got a unit that weathers a little bit differently, and, and maybe that's our JK unit. So those weathering patterns are giving us the outline to that outcrop. Um, the other thing that I do is so that I get the right perspective, I try to use my hand and figure out the proportions of things in the sketch. Okay, so like if I were in the field and I were standing there looking up at this, and you can do this virtually too, I take my hand and be like, okay, well, that section of Wingate to JK is about the same height as this section above the trees, and it's a little bit shorter than this slope going out. And then this is going to be longer than all that, that top block before it breaks down. Okay? I can also look at the shape of this. So this slope right here, here this ridge, cliff, sorry, is broken into kind of a section that jumps out, a section that goes in, a little block that comes back out, a little block that comes back in. Okay, so now I'm going to mark out some of those sections. So I'm going to take my hand. And mark out the elevations of things. This came out a little bit farther and was lower. Now that, that looks about level going across. Even though this, this is going downhill, notice how you can see this going level across. Okay. Okay, maybe even up a little bit. Okay. And it's actually wider in this direction than it is tall. So come out like that. And then maybe another section going down. And that one is going down. It's even down relative to this block. Okay. And then I might stop my sketch uh, past this little goalie area. Okay, so now that I've kind of got those dots marked out, now I can start sketching. So I think the easiest thing to sketch is probably going to be this boundary right here, that ridge. So coming down off that, we've got some ridges, almost like little transition units. And then we go down. We've got a couple units that stick out here that look like maybe they're a little bit more competent. Okay. Now I've got to transition and start taking on this area. So looks like the very top of that is like a little jutting part of a ridge. And it sticks out. comes back in. Then we've got this kind of like rounded area that comes in. But we've got to make sure that we can fit one, two, three, four block sections in there. So if that's that first block, then we need to come back out one. We need another big section coming out. And then we've got a section where it goes in. 
and it actually looks like it comes in front and becomes a part of that ridge. So when we come down here, we'll want to make sure we connect those together. All right, now let's go across the top. So across the top, we have kind of this, looks like a hilly thing in the background, but mostly we're just going to go straight across to this. And it's kind of a, a lumpy weathering pattern. So I'm going to do a little bit of a lump. And here's where that little hill is weathering up. All right, then it drops down pretty rapidly right there. And then comes across. Now, Gullies like this might mess with your eye, but you want to make sure that you see it goes down and then juts right back up at the edge. So there's that little jet, then it goes back down again. Okay, so now we've got the outline of our formation. Now we can start filling it in with major details. So again, detail people, resist the urge. Res <laughs> resist the urge to draw more detail, just for now. We gotta pick units that go all the way across and major features. So I'm actually gonna start with uh, this little goalie area. And the reason why I'm gonna start with that is this is a pretty good size fracture going down, but also I can kind of see where these units are going across. And I'm gonna be able to trace them back up to what they look like on the hillside. Okay, so down in that gully, we're going to go, um, let's see, we're going to go down a little bit. Notice too, actually, let, let's take care of this part first. This fracture actually doesn't extend all the way through all of the Wingate units. It stops right about here. So let's trace this through first, and then let's worry about that fracture. So that unit is going up to the base of where the overhang over here is. And it looks like, I mean, you can, you can do this with your hand on the hillside. It's going down about like that. So just take your hand over and trace it down. Okay, looks good. I'm going to make it a little bit, instead of almost curved, I'm going to go ahead and just straighten it out. Okay, now I can start sketching in this fracture. So that's the top of that unit. That fracture is going to go up to the bottom of this. It starts in that gully. If you've had me for a structure, you know that you only draw darkness for fracture. We don't really worry about shading shadows as much. But in this situation, this fracture is really big and this outcrop, it's kind of dominating a good marking point on that side, so that's why we're going to go ahead and sketch that in. Okay, so now we've got this fracture sketched. Now we kind of have a guideline for what we're going to do with other units. <coughs> okay, the next unit up is this unit that, that kind of juts out. Now as that unit goes down the cliff face, it goes over and then it comes down and kind of hits right in the middle of that fracture pattern. So I'm going to go out. And then it continues on down. All right, the next one up is this one that's kind of tucked in a little bit. Now this one more, goes more over and then down and, and goes off right at the tip of that fracture. 
And that's because this outcrop is kind of jutting out a little bit. There's some preserved rock right there um, where you have fractures that are kind of coming out. All right, and then you've got that top unit. So this is divided right here. It looks like there's a kind of a unit that goes across and over, and that might be the top of that wind gate. So it's going to go up. And then that unit is actually going to end up being our surface over here. So this needs to come down just a little bit. Nothing wrong with erasing. All right, and then we've got that top unit there. Looks pretty good. Let's sketch in some of these these lower units down here. Okay, so this one, the base of this is kind of base of that frac, the one right below the fracture. This one, that looks pretty smooth, but it looks like there's like rubbly piles over it. Which makes sense. It's the bottom of things that have eroded. Alright, then we've got kind of a unit that juts out. It's a little bit more competent. Got a little bit more of one below that. And some thin ones below that. Kind of come in and out on these. And I'm sketching to be accurate, but I'm also sketching to represent the geology. So I want to be able to come here in the future and say, oh yeah, I drew that. Like that's the goal. It's not, it's definitely not perfection. The goal is I see that I, it makes sense with my measurements. Um, that, that's more the goal. Now, if you want to add the dots, if you want to add some indication that this is a talus slope, you can start to do that. That way you can you can kind of remember, oh yeah, I did that because that was that was eroded material below those. And I'm gonna draw on some of these fracture patterns just so that it's clear that this is this is a rock that's sticking out. Looks like this fracture is a little bit more coarsely than this one down here. I'm just going to make sure I reflect that in the sketch. Okay. Now moving up this way, um, I'm going to start to sketch in some of the major patterns I see here. So the top unit looks like it is kind of rounded in how it weathers. So let's try to get that reflected in there. And how it weathers and how it fractures. It just kind of looks soft. Okay. I'm going to go down to this um, to next one, which looks like it's divided into kind of multiple smaller units. Where 
the upper. Upper unit. Looks like it's a little bit more fractured than the bottom two. Fractures really pick up over here, going down to this. Sorry about the hammering, by the way. They're doing some construction in the room next door. I'm just going to sketch in some of these bigger fractures to kind of guide me while I'm sketching. Okay, then. I'm going to go down to this unit, which is kind of the, the brought in unit where that dot is. I'm going to mark that dot to kind of guide my eye. Now this one is different. It's got like a, a weathering pattern and that weathering pattern even goes across where it's like blocky fracturing and then dark weathering. So indicate for yourself that you've got blocky fracturing and then I'm going to start sketching in some of this dark weathering. I wish I hadn't moved my pen side to side because the the weathering is just like streaky, like up and down. But then there's also like these just really solid blocks of it. This whole area by this fracture, like even as we go down through these units that are subdivided below it, you still have some of that like staining look to it. Looks like the weathering pattern gets a little bit lighter, but it's persistent. It's almost more dominant in what I'm seeing than the than the fracturing pattern. And then these, it, it looks like there's thinner layers that are in there, but they're not enough to really block it out. So I'm going to like divide it into blocks. So I'm just going to sketch those across so I know that they're there. So I can, I mean, I'm just going to note that I can see them, but they're not the dominant pattern um, for this rock unit. Okay. And below this, there's also some. Okay, and that they persist below the fractures. Okay. All right, and then it looks like there's also some of these kind of weird weathering things. And I know that that's not really part of the sketch, but I'm just going to note that that happens by kind of drawing one in, noting that it's there. Um, and I'll label that. So now let's take our guess as to what these things might be. So this unit might be the TRC. And I'm going to say maybe it starts there. This might be Wingate. And then this top unit might be JK. Okay, so let's let's talk about what we were right about each one of these and we'll do a formal rock description in the next video. This one had softer, rounder weathering. It had a lighter color. It wasn't stained. Um, it wasn't heavily fractured or if there were fractures, it seems like there's been some weathering out. Also, if this is part of this unit, then we need to note that it, it might form these kind of towers of rock. So we would say all those things. The JW, uh, the Wingate, what's and the J is Jurassic. What's standing out here is this unit has blocky fractures. It forms really uh, nice walls uh, or cliffs, and probably because it's got those blocky fractures, that the staining on that unit is pervasive. Uh, that it can make that unit look really dark, whereas this JK unit looks like it stays pretty light. So we've got a, a stained dark unit and then uh, that it's massively bedded. So even when we can see these kind of thinner layers running through, 
it's still forming these big blocks. I mean, you saw how we were able to draw that cliff face and let that be a guiding uh, force in the rest of the drawing. That's what that means. Like that's what that is massively bedded cliff forming um, rock. Then down here in the TRC, this is gonna be capped, or the top of the TRC is a little bit of a little bit of a ridge former, but it very quickly transitions down into um, transitions down into these other uh, slope formers where we've got a few units peeking out. But it's not massively bedded, it's thinly bedded. It looks maybe a little bit more red. Uh, these looked more orange to me. This looks a little bit more red. Um, and that it has like lots of small fractures that have it kind of peeking out. The last thing we need is a scale. So what you could do, um, not use these trees in the foreground, but you can look across here and you can see that there's a tree on that other side. So you could, you could say, Kind of that is tree scale. So maybe a few meters. Um, the other thing that you can do, if you can't find that, is I'm gonna go up to this thing real quick. So I'm gonna exit street view. I'm gonna see if I can't get down on that side of the road and see if I can look up at that thing. Okay, so now over here, I've got the poles that are kind of halfway up the cliff, and so I might be able to use those too to help me, because they go up to this area right here. So, this is probably not tree scale. If we start, let's see, if we look down the road, it looks like those posts, I mean, if this is the width of a road, these are sagebrush, so they're pretty small. It looks like those telephone poles are just part of that cliff face. They're not the full thing, so. I'm going to say from here to about there. So making not making up the whole ridge for sure, but maybe making up the height difference between those two. That's telephone pole scale, so maybe 20 feet. Okay, and then we need to do a, a horizontal distance. And so in Google Earth, that's pretty easy. We exit street view. If you were there, if you were in the field, you'd pace it out. But we sketched the side of this outcrop. And I'm just going to do measuring in feet from here to here. So we, wow, 1,300 feet. We measured Thirteen hundred feet. So that twenty foot measurement is probably not right. That's crazy. Let's make it a little bit smaller. But it also has to do with the fact that we were looking up from the road um, when we were doing this. So I mean, all the way up here, twenty feet down here is going to look really big. Twenty feet up here is going to be small because we're we're scaling up. So, at the road, that's probably about the scale. All right. So again, when you're doing your field sketches, you want to make sure that you're first capturing that outline, that you're kind of getting everything so that it's proportional. that you're getting the major fracture patterns, that you're getting the major strata, uh, and then that you're finishing it by putting that detail in, and that your shadow, your darkness that you add to your sketch isn't shadow. We're, this, is a, this sketch is meant to help me remember where I was in the field. It is not art.
Well, it is art, but it's you, you understand what I'm saying. You're not doing this to be an artist. You're doing it because you want to remember where you were and you want it to be informative. Okay, so I would argue that this type of sketch, this is pretty informative. Yours may not look like this right away. That's okay. It's okay to erase.